Hey guys, my name is Ryan, and we're back again with another Spirit Island video. Recently, I put up a quick little video demonstrating the teeth reclaim loop, and in it, I was saying that I just don't like the loop and I don't like to do it in my games. And that got me thinking how I've said similar things before with the wandering voice loop, and other spirits such as River and Bay Serpent I just don't enjoy playing. But on the other hand, I've also talked quite a bit about how much I love playing Lightning Swift Strike, and I did not like the change in playstyle with the new aspect of Sparking Lightning. So what gives? Why am I so inconsistent? Before we get into it, let's do a quick reminder of what each of these loops are. So starting on the left over here with Wandering Voice, we have all four of our unique cards. And we'll go Growth 2, going top-bottom, play one card, then growth 2, bottom bottom, playing nothing, growth 2, going bottom bottom, reclaim that one card that we played earlier with this reclaim one spot, play the whole grip, and then we reclaim loop it for the rest of the game. So you can start playing this loop as early as turn 3. With Devouring Teeth, we have Ferocious Rampage and Herd Towards the Lurking Maw. Uh, we can start this as early as turn 1 by taking the energy right here. Uh, and then we can just reclaim loop them, hitting this three energy spot in order to keep it sustainable uh, before growing across the bottom track or doing as you see fit. With River, we have all four of our unique cards once again. And so generally, you start this loop on turn four. You can growth two, bottom, bottom, play two cards. Growth two, bottom, bottom, reclaim one, play three cards. Then typically here, you can either G3, adding a presence, you could G2, going top bottom. I usually like to G3 here, but either way, then you can reclaim and then uh, you can play all four cards on turn four. Another approach would be to reclaim here and perhaps underplay a little bit. So that way then you can grow again, hitting that four card plays and on turn four, you have your max innate. Coming over to here to Serpent, you can start this loop as early as turn two, the Aegis um, Absorb loop, and you start only on turn two because that's when you get two card plays. But then, uh, because this gives you energy when you play it, you can sustainably play this for the rest of the game. And on Lightning Swift Strike, you're going to go Growth 2, top, top, play no cards. Then on your second turn, you're going to go Growth 2, bottom, bottom, at which point you can play Shatter Homesteads, Lightning Spoon, and Harbingers, and then you can loop those um, for the rest of the game. We're going to have three energy a turn, so then we can pay these three cost worth of cards. So I've got these five spirits ordered from left to right in order from my least favorite to my most favorite loopers. And one of the reasons why I like Lightning more than all the rest of these is that there is actually space for a little extra. So this loop has four card plays, but we're only playing three cards here. Since we gain a card on our reclaim, we can start to draft more and we can naturally incorporate these newly gained cards into our loop. That is distinctively different from these guys over here, which do not gain new cards at any point in their loop. Serpent as well does not have the capacity to gain new cards because even though he is a pick two for his growth options, we have to pick one as Reclaim and the other as Add a Presence, and there's just no more space to pick Drafting as well. River does get the ability to gain new cards every time that you Reclaim, but unless if you get a few very specific cards that are on Element, we're just not going to be able to incorporate them without giving up our amazing innate. I really like Drafting cards. I think it's one of the most interesting parts of the game. Thinking about all the different pathways that you can approach the game and all the different ways that you could change your strategy in order to maximize the value of what you've been given is a very satisfying experience for me. So anything that cannot gain new cards over the course of the loop, I'm simply going to shy away from. Gaining cards is cool and all, but why do these reclaimed loops exist? Frankly, it's because they're good. I mean, take a look at all of these spirits. You can see that by hitting these loops, we're getting great amounts of elements for our innates which all have board control elements to them, and the cards that we're playing interact with the board really well. If we're going to be gaining new cards, we have to make sure that the cards that we gain are better than just reclaim looping and playing what we already have. 
if we take a look at all of these spirits and we look at the cards, what they do, and the element combinations that they have, which gives us our innate, we can see that, you know, they're popular for a reason. They really affect the board in a very meaningful manner. River and Voice have a similar play style where they funnel everything into one single land and then blow that one land up. Whereas Teeth and Serpent have a similar play style where they're picking off towns and they're slowly trying to gain advantages across the board while adding a presence every turn, hoping to grow into something bigger. And it's that growing into something bigger that I think is going to be the core of what I want to talk about today. How do we break out of these loops? Every spear in front of us has the capacity to break out of the loop on its own means, with the exception of Wandering Voice. And I think that's really the reason why I so thoroughly despise the Wandering Voice loop. Once you commit to it on turn one, there's absolutely no breaking out of it for the entire game. So what do I mean by this? Let's imagine that we had some kind of a chart where like this is your power level and this is time. Okay, so we know on turn three we hit the loop and from turn three on we don't do anything else. On turn one we're going to play a card. On turn two we're going to play nothing. On turn three, you know, we have a ton of power like, you know, I'm not going to lie. It's a really, really strong loop to be in. But then for the entire rest of the game we are perfectly flat. We get no stronger at any point for the rest of the game. We have to hope that the invaders, while they are ramping up, that we can get so far ahead in this space right here that we win the game before it becomes an issue. Otherwise, if some kind of event happens or we make some kind of tactical error, there's nothing you can do. You can't get any stronger. You just lose and there's nothing you can do about it. With Teeth on turn one, we play both our cards, but we don't get our innate. And then we hit that innate on turn two. And then for turn two, three, for like turn two, three, and four, we all are at the same. So turn one, so two, three, four, we're at the same power level for three turns in a row. But then when we get to this spot here, we're probably not going to have any energy. If we were given some energy, we can then play another card. But... Otherwise, we actually have to go for this fourth energy here. So that's one more turn without gaining any power before we gain a little bit of power again. And so you have this big doldrum here that, you know, I feel like is quite the slog to get through. But once we do get through it, you know, we, there is more power to be had as we start to incorporate either our gift or our defend ability. Uh, so that way we do have a little bit more play on the board. It is worth noting that we eventually can hit our full innate just through reclaim looping when we get ourselves to this point because of all the free elements on our tracks, this combination of cards. Uh, so there is there is a ways to go, but when you get here, we're talking turn 9, so not realistic. Now River's an interesting one. We have a very smooth ramp up, and I think that's why this spirit is just so easy to play is because we don't have these awkward moments where we're not able to do everything that we wish we could do. We hit our first tier of our innate on turn one, second tier of our innate on turn two and three, and then on turn four and everywhere after we hit our max level innate. So we have plenty of strength at every point in the game. And so we start quite a bit higher and we come on up before we start to table off. Serpent is a really interesting spirit if we're trying to evaluate power by turn because we have all of these little points that can make a difference. So for example, once we hit on turn four this any element, we can pick up a plant and that gives us access to this innate here which gives energy to us and to other spirits. Then, particularly on turn five when we hit this reclaim one, all of a sudden we don't like need to be in the reclaim loop since we can pick up one of these two cards for free, really we're going to be picking up Aegis for free, and then we can actually start to do a little bit of drafting and start to work our way out of that loop. Uh, depending on the situation on the board, you might even be able to sneak in a draft or two earlier than that, but really it's turn five with this reclaim one where you're never going to have a turn where you don't need to use elemental Aegis. So your power chart 
I don't know, turn one, you do something small. Turn two, you get that big defend. Okay, three, we get nothing. Four, we get that little bump. Five, we're nominally at the same amount of power. But here is where, you know, lots of options become available to us. And that really brings me into the next thing that makes Lightning a much more fun reclaim loop spirits than these others is potential. Uh, you know, how good can we be? We can break out of this loop and, you know, where do we go from here? Certainly with Serpent, we all know that you have an amazing top end with 12 energy, 5 card plays, the double reclaim, just throwing down all your fat majors and obliterating the board. And in a similar way, Lightning has 6 card plays. That's the most card plays of any spirit in the game. No one else has 6 card plays available to them. And we're only hitting our first two tiers of our innate at four card plays, which destroys one building. But when we get to our max level innate, we can destroy three cities every single turn uh, with our innate, which is insane. You know, one of the strongest innates in the game. So both of these spirits have a ton of upper end power that is so tantalizing, that is so exciting. It makes you willing to play through that reclaim loop because the allure of that amazing explosion of power down the line makes it feel like it's worth it so if we were to draw out the chart for lightning you know we we do nothing on turn one turn two we hit a power level okay turn three we probably reclaim loop we picked up one more card uh and then we're reclaim looping for a little bit but at some point we want to get to this extra high level of power so sometimes you try and sneak an opportunity to take an off turn so you can explode to the higher heights and then ride that wave for the rest of the game. And there's nothing that the invaders can do that can compete with six cards a turn on top of having the three cities destroyed every single turn. No, one, no invader in the game can keep up with that. And I think a lot of players are subliminally aware of all of this hidden power tucked within lightning. People really like to pair Lightning Swift Strike with any kind of spirit that can give more power cards. Being able to accelerate the rate at which Lightning can grow again can be all it takes to change the whole game. In a similar manner, you know, people love to talk about proliferating Serpent. We gotta push Serpent, we gotta push Serpent. We need to get him through to the upper half of his presence tracks as fast as possible. While there could be a lot of nuance in exactly when and how you want to do that proliferation on Serpent, the truth is that there is a ton of power packed up back here. Most energy gain in the game by an absurd margin. And a high number of card plays, very impactful innates. You know, everything is awesome about this guy once he gets going. But we can take this logic and we can start working it down the line in reverse. And we'll start to see there's less and less available to us. With River, we've already got our max innate. We can't possibly get any stronger here. All we can do is pick up one extra, probably like a throwaway card, just some random extra effect. You know, there's just not a lot there. Here with Teeth, the real restriction is the energy cost. You know, it takes so much energy just to play our loop as is that by the time we get to the third card play, we can't even afford it. So we often have to grow up to four energy before we can hit three card plays just to play our starting cards. And then we can't even play new cards because we can't even gain new cards. So that's what makes it so insufferable. I like to gain cards in the first, uh, you know, turn one, two, three, as many times as I can early. You usually wind up reclaim looping for a little bit anyways, but at least when you get to three card plays, you have something to do. And of course, the most egregious is Wandering Voice. We have maxed out our card plays. We've maxed out our innates. I mean, I don't know. What more can you want? <laughs> You'd have to take row three, which means that you're not reclaim looping this, uh, just to be able to give yourself the opportunity to do something else. But since we're so tight on energy, we can't even afford anything else. You know, we can't even consider going for a major or anything like that. You know, what happens when we win our whole board and then all of a sudden... Well, the whole loop just doesn't do anything. We can't go somewhere else. We can't help another spirit out. Our Incarna is mobile, but only to our presence. So what are you going to do? You know, it's just, 
It's strong. Like, I get it. It's strong. And you'll crush it in solo games. But, man, you're just so absurdly restricted. And this one's the worst because you have to commit to everything as early as turn two. Play nothing on turn two so that you can hit the loop on turn three. And at that point, you just made a deal with the devil. Of all the spirits we've been talking about today, Teeth definitely has the worst reclaim loop. It's expensive, it's slow, and it's not even that powerful. We can't even kill a city until turn 5. So I pulled out all the minor powers in the deck, and I laid them out here on the table in different groups, so that way we can consider different lines or ways that we can change our strategy to increase our power depending on what we get. But really, first things first, is that all the minor powers in the deck cost either 0 or 1 energy. So no matter what it is that we pull, we're going to decrease the cost of the loop. We could get uh, like a 2 cost Ferocious Rampage with any 0 cost card, or we could take any 1 cost card and combine it with Herd, and that will save us a whole turn on the loop because now we don't need to grow to this 3 energy spot. Okay, normally it takes us 5 turns, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to get to that city kill, but if we can do it one whole turn faster just by drafting some half-decent miners, great, we've already improved our situation. Um, as we're going to see though, there is even more opportunities where we could do it on turn 3. So this first group to look at is the Dahan and Defend group. We have the nominally best Defend card of all the uniques in the game with a Defend 9. However, it forces you to push Dahan out of the land, so we cannot leverage that defense to, you know, use the Dahan and convert that into offense. So one side of the coin, we could just use some of these Dahan movement cards. Obviously, these slow ones are going to be a lot less effective than these fast ones, right? Because you could defend first, you know, even if there's zero Dahan, kick all zero of them out, and then bring some other Dahan in fast. We have some of them do two, some of them do three, so... Uh, that already right there is a line of strategy that becomes available. But you could also just pick up any of these other defend cards that don't kick Dahan out of the land. You know, this whole group down here is on element cards. So if you were to get something, you know, like this domesticated animals, or really, you know, the nature's resilience is the real nice one, use the Dahan that are naturally there. On a standard board, every single terrain starts with Dahan in it. They'll have two of each land type. One of them will have Dahan, either one or two Dahan, and the other won't. So on any given Ravage, uh, we can defend one of the lands and then, you know, use our normal attack cards or whatever on the other land. And that's how we can solve both at the same time while making forward progress. These ones are only have Earth. These ones have no elements for us. But, you know, they all largely accomplish that same goal. Over here are a bunch of support cards. With any of these support cards, we can still hit our innates while simultaneously improving the strength of our teammates. Uh, you know, giving out free elements can get our teammates way ahead of the curve. We're playing extra cards, right? That's, you know, getting them ahead of the curve as well. If they can crush their board faster, they can come on over and help us out. Of course, we know that Constancy and Sky Stretches are two of the best support cards in the game. Gift of Power, everyone wants to receive this card. Support cards in general tend to be a minor bit under-costed in order to incentivize their use. It's that coordinated team play that makes Spirit Island so special. Over here, we have some board removal cards. Uh, these ones are generally ones I'm not excited about. You know, destroy effects as opposed to damage effects. Very conditional damage. Uh, damage that comes with a big asterisk on it, but anything here we can make use of with our special rule, and, you know, we could take this little two damage card and convert it into a one energy kill a city, which is insane. And then over here, we have some cards that just provide other various forms of utility. We have lots of push and control powers over here, various uh, tokens that can provide value in other ways over here. With any of these cards, uh, we can shape and sculpt the board to our advantage while staying on element. You have these two cards, which are technically on element that we really don't care about. And then you have all these cards over here that are off element that, you know, those are the ones that we're looking to avoid. But frankly, there's so few of them 
the math is wildly in our favor. I think I saw it's uh, less than a 1% chance of all four cards that were given in a draft is coming out of this pile right here. So a 99% chance of us getting a good card out of any of these categories. But of course, there's one last section I've been avoiding, and that's this right here. And these are cards that have elemental combinations uh, that we are missing with our spirit, specifically the fire-earth pairing. If we take a look at all of our uniques, we have everything has animal, so that's easy. Two of them have earth, and two of them have fire, but no card has both fire and earth. So if we were to pick up one of those, that's another way that we can get ahead on this path. Because we go here, we go here. If we have any fire earth card, and then, you know, whatever, like this, it, you know, it doesn't matter. One of the double element cards, that gives us our innate. So by picking up this, we could then loop it into here, right? We have no marginal gain in power, that's whatever. And then we get right here, and now we can play a third card and, you know, start to destroy a city. There are two cards in the deck which has all three of our elements, Gold's Allure and Quicken the Earth Struggle. Gold's Allure, I would argue, is the single best card that we could possibly draw. Zero cost, try element. On turn three, we have the capacity to destroy a city with our innate, we have board control, and we have more damage here. This is absolutely gorgeous. Then, of course, we just keep on going and we keep on ramping up in power. So there's only one of this in the whole deck, right? We can't make this our primary game plan. But if we draft early, we can just go right for it and we can get everything we could have ever dreamed of. I personally feel like there is so much potential upside by doing drafts on Devouring Teeth. Even if we only get two, maybe three drafts over the course of the whole game before we reclaim loop, we can get one or two turns faster to our you know, ability to destroy cities and all of the power that comes with it. I think it's absolutely worth it. And I really want to see the reclaim loop die. For today's gameplay video, kind of as a response to myself, we're going to play Teeth again, but this time we're going to make a point to draft as often as we can. In the mid game, we probably are going to do a bit of reclaim looping. That's just how these games tend to go. But by drafting a few times in the early game, we create the opportunity for a quicker uh, scaling up period so we don't have this long slog where we're not getting stronger turn over turn. So let's check it out. And we're going to get HME5. And we're on board G. All right. Starting off in the mountains. Okay, so, um, you know, we're just going to start right out, right away by drafting. This disease is going to get consumed. We can use this herd to gather this out. If we wanted to, we could next turn defend this. So we're under no pressure right now to do anything in particular. So we're just going to gain a card. Let's see what we get. And right away, we have four great choices. Enticing Splendor is off element, but with Mark Territory, combine that with Enticing Splendor, and we can realize the full value of a defend. Particularly against HME, where you can have two or sometimes even three ravages in a single turn, uh, defend is really important to prevent all that blight, but defend with Dahan can fully clear a land. So I'm strongly considering going for this Enticing Splendor, but, I mean, all of these are completely viable. We could do Shadows of the Burning Forest to go right here, let it build, push it out. You know, we get the same kind of thing as Herd, but we spend less energy and we get more fear. Uh, we could just do a simple Defend too, so that way we can let the Dahan do a little work. Or, you know, because we're against HME, these diseases are going to be great. I mean, I feel like I've kind of already made my point. <laughs> I mean, here we are in the spirit phase of turn one. And, you know, the hardest part here is trying to fit, figure out which of these great cards is the best for us in this situation. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, no matter what I pick here, there's going to be a little bit of buyer's remorse by having not taken something else.
gosh. Because it's HME, I'm really leaning towards Inflame. Just a full-on Ravage skip. Like, I could just disease this land here, slide my presence out, gather the town, and we're set and ready to go for next turn, and we can just play, like, Ferocious Rampage plus, like, whatever we draft next turn. Um, and then, yeah, I, gosh, yeah, I, th I think just a disease add, double element, I mean, why not? Okay, so we'll go here, playing this, I mean, gosh, next turn we could just reclaim it and then get the strafe and top, uh, I don't, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to gain as many cards as you could in the early game. Those were great hits, up and down. Uh, mining Boom. I think we might just Mining Boom this since we're planning on Ravage skipping the land anyways. Uh, it'll give us a little bit of time. There is a 3 and 4 chance of us dodging it on the first land 2 card, which means that we just don't need to deal with this land again until I think it's turn 6, turn 5 before it actually becomes a threat again. It's a really long time. Whatever land comes up first, you can ignore for a good while afterwards. Anyways, uh, that was that. Mining Boom, Exploring the Wetlands. Okay, we'll add a Disease. Move our Presence. Probably going to go this way and go for a Fear Gather because we're sitting on a Defend. So when it comes around, we can just Defend it. Time passes. So here we could go for any zero cost card plus Ferocious Rampage. And we might just bum rush the bottom track. We could... Uh, I mean, you could go for like Energy playing those two cards. But that doesn't do anything for us, right? Because we have nothing to defend. So let's just gain a card. Even if we miss, it's fine. But I mean like... You know, these two cards suck, but I mean, these two cards are both insane. They both have that fire earth that we're missing. This deals damage, uh, which, you know, we get the bonus from our special rule. This, um, it'll cost an energy for us to copy a disease. So if we pair this with Ferocious Rampage, we're not going to be able to get the effect. Um, but looking at doing that, and that... So we get the damage here, damage here. We'll just start copying beast tokens. Hopefully we can get some value from that. Um, but later in the game, I mean, we've already picked up a strife. So being able to do double strife, that could be really good. So yeah, this is the pick. Um, it is worth considering going for Gift of Furious Might in combination with Unquenchable Flames because we'll still get the innate here. And I might even convince myself as I say this out loud. Because uh, this will do like 4 damage. We can kill 2 towns. Uh, with the Badlands, come on in. That'll kill a city. Give me disease, right? Boom, boom. Kill 2 towns. Kill the city. That'll leave us with just a town and explorer in the land. That's an interesting choice. Right? Or in the same way, right, we could kill these guys off, right, work ourselves towards a pocket, which is damn near impossible on board she. But, I mean, you can you can try. Um, and then we just defend this land. Getting bad lands. Bad lands are so good for us. All right, I convinced myself. <laughs> we'll do this. And we need a sacred site here. In order to use this card. Vader phase event. Um, stage one. We get an extra explored. Each land explored. Hey look. Looks like we're playing uh, HME6. Strife and disease. Skip ravage actions. <laughs> uh, push to Dahan from a land with city to land without city. Nothing happens. Ravage. Skipped. Skipped. Build. Uh, exploring with the extra explorer here. Okay. Oh, oh, shoot, I forgot to mining boom. Um, 
I mean, okay. I'm going to, because it's really easy for me to be like, oh yeah, I totally would have picked the sands. We're just going to mix these up. Okay, one of them goes away. One of them is about to be explored. And I do think we mining boom here in land number five, independent of seeing that jungles explore, because this way I can um, just hit it with my ferocious rampage next turn. Let's see, but if it explores, Frozen Rampage is not gonna be good enough. Maybe, let's see, if we go into, since we have this skipped, we actually don't need to defend it. So we could use our Mark Territory here on land number four. Uh, so we could go like this. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Okay, and we get Sands. Okay. So low phase, we get this, we get a fear, two damage, and a badlands. Mm. I think we go here, getting a badlands. Because we want to use our innate to deal two damage to find our way to gain some kind of advantage. So I'm thinking we'll go here, do two damage. Time passes. I'm thinking we might just play both of these cards uh, with uh, gaining extra energy. To play both of these to defend this. We'll take a Blight here, but then we'll be able to use Ferocious Rampage. We'll full clear the land, right? Because it'll Ravage, upgrade, that's 4 HP. So I think that's what we're going to do. So gain three, gain energy. Okay, go here, and we're going to do two fear, defend nine, and we'll kick this Dahan over here. Pair up our Dahan, play around, cultural asim, you know, two Dahan gives you an energy, you know, there's all kinds of nice benefits for that. And here we get rising interest, extra damage on buildings. So we'd still be fully defended, but do we even have an air card to pitch? We do not. We can't afford it. That's an absolute shame, which means we go straight to the salt card. <laughs> Turn the top card of the invader deck to the box. We don't get to see what it is. Uh, add a town to a land with no town. Um, I think we go here. So it'll explore and then it'll be mining so it doesn't build. Uh, add a beast to a jungle with no blight. Fear if invaders are present, okay? And then add a wild to a land with um, Dahan. We're gonna go here just because it's two steps away. We don't have any adjacent presence. Hardest for us to deal with it. So that's how we're gonna go over there. And presence defends for two. Gosh, it's a game of skill, really. Uh, <laughs> so, Ravage, Ravage. Um, build does nothing. Mining Boom. Now, if we were to Mining Boom here, we are going to not be able to clear it with our setup. I mean, I guess we could, right? We can invest all of our damage into that land. I think that's fine. Because, I mean, the, the salt turn is kind of your chill turn. So we'll just go right here. Salt, salt, salt. Wild and salt. We'll invest all of our actions. Fear and then ultimately six damage to clear this land. Time passes. And now, thanks to those drafts, we can reclaim... Right here, hit three energy, three card plays, and we're in a fantastic position. We have no Blight coming down this turn, so really we can just go for all full slow offense and, uh, you know, just be happy with the results. 
Unfortunately, we did not pull any zero cost card. So to play three cards here, I guess maybe we shouldn't rush to three cards with this consideration. Um, like we can't do that. We need the earth. So I feel like Unquenchable Flames is just an obvious card to play. We could do something like this. Which thresholds everything. Gives us good control, some good damage. Then what, next turn we just gain energy playing all of this, growing here. All right, so we do that. Next turn we play this, uh, growing here, which doesn't make a difference, but it gets us closer to that three energy point. Yeah, I think I'm fine with that. I think I'm more than fine with that. So that was on Reclaim, which is a growth uh, range zero growth. Fast phase, we have nothing. Uh, event, Promising Farmlands. We get a town instead of an explorer. That's no big deal. Had a beast to a land, no blight with town. Okay. And defend per Dahan. Makes no difference. Strife in a land with or adjacent to Beast. Um, so I think we're going to Strife here. Because now if we come in and hit it with our innate... Well, it's not going to be mining, so it's not going to Ravage anyways. But... Oh, yeah. I'm only looking at Soul Ravagers. Gosh, we have so many options. But generally, Strifing Cities is the best. Ravage. Build. Uh, no other non-salt lands. Mining boom. I think I'm going to go here because of the badlands. If we do this, yeah, and it might be a waste of damage to use... Um, or actually, sorry, I was thinking about Furious Rampage. Ferocious Rampage. Uh, let's see. This turn, we could herd to break up either one of these. Whichever one doesn't explore, we can break it up. So I think we want to keep them both at three. That's not going to go. So I think, yeah, we just go right here into this wetlands. That we can focus all of our damage into one land. We can solve one of these ravages just by gathering out of it. Defend the other. Yeah, I think that's the line. Then exploring. One of them has to come in as a town. So I think we'll put the town here and the explorer here. Add an explorer to two lands that are not jungles. So we'll go here and here. Okay, slow phase. We got nothing but options. Too many options. Okay. Go fear, gather this this way. So now that's not going to ravage. Um, that's not going to ravage. We only have three ravaging lands this next turn. The jungles are going to be double ravaging. So I'm thinking, might want to just throw my innate. I can full clear this land with my innate. Which seems reasonable to me. Just come on in and don't have any other troubles. So now we have a Strife, Disease, and Unquenchable Flames. Because a single disease will solve all of this, I think we're going to do that. So Fear, Disease, Strife. That leaves just one land that could possibly give us a Blight this next turn. And so we'll get that with the Unquenchable Flames. Fear, two damage, and add a Badlands. Sweet. So we can just, yeah, we can just defend this land for two. And then we're chilling. Three energy. Play the grip. OK. 
Okay, we'll get bonus damage eventually to fear, defend nine. Got a nice pile of fear cards. If we get anything that moves to Han, we're real happy. Let's see the event. Far off islands. Ooh, we actually can take the two blight without uh, without having anything bad happen, which is always very fun. So it would allow us to destroy a city and two towns in either G2 or uh, G8. And in fact, if we hit G8, uh, or actually either of them, it will no longer be mining. Since this is already strifed and it's got a beast and all that stuff, I'm actually going to hit G8 with it. So we get four fear straight up, two blight right here, but then we get to kill all of this. Add a bad land to a land with blight. Hey, why not? And gather one or two into a land with setup symbols. Unfortunate that is not you. Uh, we'll go right here. Add a strife to a town or city in a land not matching a ravage card, not assault card. Each invader takes one damage per strife that it has. Ooh, that's a big deal. I mean, we could just kill this town. Um, because I feel like we're not going to really make use of the damage here. Um, I feel like we're just going to run in and take advantage of all this damage since this is a, a big threatening land. So let's just kill this. Take one damage each. Uh, choose a different land with the Han. One damage and defend three in... Uh, lands with the Han. No, we could have killed the city. Um, let's just kill the explorer, do a ping on the city. As opposed to pinging an explorer somewhere else. Push three from an inland land. So we could full clear this land. And yeah, now we're good. Now we have to get in here because now it's a loss condition. Um, but, I mean, that's kind of our plan A anyways. And now our mountains is pocketed too. Strife in a land with Dahan. Invaders have minus one health down to a minimum of one. So I don't think we're going to be doing any damage on this city. So let's just go here. Yeah, if I had full foresight, if we were playing with, like, Bodan or something, we could have cleared that city, but, hey, what are you going to do? It's not like pocketing is bad, especially on board G, where it's, like, freaking impossible to get a decent pocket done. Uh, we can be happy with this. So, anyways, Ravage in the um, Salt Lands, Build in the Jungle, uh, Mining Boom. Should we just Mining Boom right here? Why not? Three, two... And explore. Come on, mountains. Yeah. Pocketed. Profited. Uh, we have to add explore to lands that are not jungles or mountains. So we'll go here and here. Okay. And we have our bonus three damage. So that makes this deal seven damage coming in. So one, two... Three, four, five, um, six, seven. Then we'll use this for a fear and four damage. One, two, three, four. Okay, puts us in a bit of a better position. Time passes. Reclaim energy adjacent to both mountains. And... Uh, this will blight and flip the blight card. It's kind of something I just don't want to deal with. So unfortunately, if we choose to do this, that means we don't have the energy to do a third card play. But I think we'll be fine. We could just do like this in flame. Um, you know, we need it just for all the elements that it has. We need to play a double element card. It's either that or gift. So Inflame just gives us a little bit of utility. To Fear, Defend 9. Uh, 
Uh, farmers, I always skip farmers. Uh, so we have Terror Breeds Aggression, every two fear cards. Okay, that's two, so we get plus one damage. So this skin Ravage for seven, we're still totally fine. Add a beast to a land adjacent to beast, and then destroy it a Han. We'll put our beast out here. With any luck, we get some kind of beast damage, and it solves itself. Uh, some free defense. Two strife in a single land, not matching a Ravage card. I think we do this. Because then we can um, drop a strife on it, and then just let it full clear itself. Defend one plus defend per Dahan. Okay. So Ravage does nothing. Uh, we'll build. Then we get a mining boom. Which I'm inclined to go into two. No, we'll just stick it on one. So go here, here, strife goes on the town of it upgrades and then we'll explore the jungle wetlands it was important that we could not do one of these for mining boom because that would make this viable to explore which means that we can't just ignore it we'd actually have to deal with it uh, so coming into this turn i think we're going to inflame just do a fear strife and a disease so we'll just um get a little free time off of that but then i think i'm actually going to come in and attack it anyways so maybe we put this yeah we'll put the strife here i'll do four damage and i'll kill city explorer but then it's no longer going to be a salt land it's no longer a salt land the disease will not stop the ravage, so the Dahan will full clear. Yeah, that's worth it. Yeah, we can do that. Time passes. Now, once again, we can defend this land, but now we're going to have four energy, so we can actually play um, three cards. So therefore, right, we can go here. And now we could do something like this and uh, this. Guess up to Terra level 3. That's very nice. Uh, very few cities on the board. I'm only seeing this one. And if we mining boom like here in 5, then there won't be any more. So we'll just win the game in the slow phase. Sweet. Okay, event. Uh, add an explorer to a land with blight. Uh, okay, we'll go over here so that way we don't lose that. Um, or we could just win the game right now because of that rating of retaliation. Yeah, so on each board we can push uh, two explorers or a town from a land with Dahan. Um, doesn't really matter. We'll push this guy over here. Then rating of retaliation, one damage per Dahan in each. Then each surviving building deals a damage back. So we get a free town kill, free town kill. But the real spice is that we get two damage with the Badland. We'll kill a city, and that will win the game. So I feel like this game was a perfect testament to really all the stuff I've been talking about. Because we drafted the cards that we did... You know, we were able to have a much better game. I mean, take a look at take a look at our setup at the end. These are all of our uniques. We're just not playing our uniques. The stuff that we drafted is just better. It's cheaper and it's more effective. So, I really hope the reclaim loot dies. I think it's anti-fun. I think it's really toxic to teach people that that's the only way that you can play the spirit. Um, you know, I I think it is actually legitimately better to draft cards, as well as being more fun and more enjoyable. So anyways, that's all for me, guys. Thank you so much, and have yourself a wonderful day.